Welcome to Las Vegas. My name is Steve Ross. I'm the president of Navit Local 53 in Burbank, California. The industry is rapidly changing. What we once did with racks and racks of equipment, we are now able to achieve with computers and software. We're here at the NAB, the National Association of Broadcasters, to take a glimpse into the future of what broadcasting will look like. Okay, very good. Okay, we're here over at the NAB, and we're at the South Hall right now, and we're going to start going in and uh, seeing some exhibits. We've got our badges, our badge holders. This is Scott Murray Hi. from NBC. Miranda. We love you. A Belden company, okay? A Belden brand. A Belden brand company. Very good. Okay. Anyway, so if you could just describe to us some of the products that are now being offered this year in 2013 uh, by Miranda and, and updates to anything else that we might have uh, at NBC's facilities. Well, one of our flagship product introductions this year is the Kaleido MX. We're the company that invented the multiviewer. We are now introducing a brand new version of the multiviewer called the Kaleido MX, which you can see in multiple different pods here on the floor. And the value proposition is that this is, people know and love the Kaleido X. It is the gold standard of multiviewers in the market. You're Mo, I'm Joe. <laughs> So, uh, welcome Everts. Uh, we're a manufacturer of uh, broadcast equipment. We deliver content from end to end, so from the RF dish antenna all the way through the facility and right back out to the handsets or the mul multiple tablets uh, television, station, television sets. Um, what we're highlighting a couple, uh, couple new technologies this year are A, 4K. How do we handle 4K? That's the upcoming technology. Uh, some of the key products that we've got now are our 4K replay system, which is Dreamcatcher. Um, the other is using our existing routing core to be able to support the multiple 3 gig signals that comprise the 4K and can carry that through an existing facility. So we have a number of different devices that allows us to do that, as well as our magnum control system that eases the management of that to a single button press on either side. Uh, so products like our routers, multi-viewers, uh, test signal generators all have the 4K capability to now provide uh, solutions for the 4K production. Uh, other new technology is the introduction of a new or a new idea for facilities of the future, 10 gig. Being able to have 10 gig as your backbone to now carry video through a facility. Instead of having multiple SDIs, we now have technology to carry 10 gig and be able to switch that over our 3080 IPX, which is our video-centric Ethernet switch. And we treat it as a video router. Um, some of the other technologies are our Playout solutions, so our integrated playout solutions, which we have a content management system and uh, storage as well as integrated playout that allows you to do sort of the channel in the box with full automation content management with full branding and et cetera, et cetera. So. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate all the information. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Ayala with Neighbor Local 53. I'm here at NAB 2013. I'm going to be walking around and getting some sound bites, shooting some good video uh, of the different exhibits, especially in relation to how they pertain to our workforce. Uh, we've got uh, automation coming in in most of our locations now, uh, and new technologies that are coming over and growing, and we want to make sure that everybody's informed about what's going on. So follow me through the exhibits, and hopefully we'll get some good information for everybody. I'm Stan Moot with Harris Broadcast. I'd like to tell you a little bit about what we do at Harris Broadcast. We cover everything from transmitters up to processing equipment, MPEG equipment, compression equipment, studio equipment, and automation equipment, traffic billing systems. And what's really important at the moment is asset management and business systems. People are thinking more and more on the business systems aspect, how they can analyze workflows, analyze data, and also understand whether or not their processes are really good on the business side and where they can save money and improve workflows. So those are really key assets. Some of the new things we have at the show here are different things like easy ways to put new channels on air with our Versio product. It's kind of like a channel in a box, but it really does focus on having live inputs as well as interfacing to business systems, which is extremely important. We've also introduced a new routing switcher where we can go up to 2,000 by 2,000. On the other side of things, business analysis side, we can actually have things running around on your iPad and you can look and get alerts on various channels running on air in case there's missing media and find that right away and see what's going on. The other thing is 
we're moving in a nonlinear world and we have to deal with advanced advertising. So we've come up with different methods to do advanced advertising, make sure your advertising isn't stale on the uh, web domain as far as that goes. And one of the big questions we have at the show is 4K. What is happening with 4K? Our opinion is 4K is very important to broadcasters. Not so much on the broadcast side. I don't think we'll see a lot of 4K channels. I think they'll be what I call boutique channels because there won't be a lot of extra money paid for advertising and things like that. So a few little channels out there. We will see web delivery, OTT on 4K. But what's most important is broadcasters should take advantage of 4K on the production side and within the plant environment. And the reason for that is take a simple look at a multi-viewer. Uh, 4K sets are four times HD. When you have a multi-viewer and you've got a lot of pictures up there, you've lost a lot of resolution. Use a 4K multi-viewer, you can see that. We've done other things, our Nexio servers. All over the world they've been deployed. People are really excited they now can play out 4K. They're future-proof for 4K. Our routers are future-proof. We have fiber that products that do 4K. So again, you may not be putting it on air, but certainly take a look at the uses of 4K. Okay, we're talking with Adele Software Pre5 Systems, and we're discussing the multi rotor version of the Movi. This is designed to go under our heavy lifter helicopter, remote controlled helicopter, and um, it's as light as can be, stabilizes the image. It's a three access mount. It's meant to have a camera operator control the motion of the camera underneath while it has somebody flying the helicopter. Um, this version of it will also ship with the two handles, so you can convert the multi rotor version to the two handle handheld. Does, does the, uh, is that, can any kind of camera, how many kinds of different cameras can you use on it? Um, it's customizable to many different cameras. Okay. Uh, the, its limit is about 12 pounds. Okay. So. Video, small video camera, um, okay. Yeah. Or one of these, a Canon or. On the heavy lifter copter over there, we have a uh, red camera. <laughs> I see. With lighter lens. <coughs> yes. And we're hoping to have them ship third quarter in the fall time. How easy is that uh, the chop fly? It takes practice, but we offer all kinds of training. Uh, we also sell, uh, provide you with a little trainer helicopter so you can fly that. Do you have a good warranty for crashes and stuff like that? <laughs> you just have to kind of work on repairing it. And what's the, I mean, what's the uh, distance you can get away from the remote unit with a chopper? How high up can you go? We kind of just keep it um, inside. Inside, okay, yeah. okay. Line of sight then. Line no, of sight, no about 500 feet. You, you go up that good. high? You go yeah, up that high? Wow, up. okay. It's a neat system. I like it. I, I saw an old, old version about 15 years ago, uh, and they had. It was a guy's home. He had. He was. He had a production company. He was basically trying to design his own thing to use for movies and stuff. And that was like the very first version of this. Um, super expensive, and you know. <laughs> But 15 grand for the for the unit, and how much for the chopper? Six cell. Chopper, about 10. 10, so 25 for the whole system? 25 for Minus the camera. Minus camera, yeah. Right. My name is Lisa Kastner. I'm with Nabit, CWA Local 53, and I'm out here shooting video for our website. This and the, the Movi has been just really popular, and I've seen the GoPro, and I've seen some things the BBC have done using the GH2 and the GH3. You have any comments about all of this new technology? Yeah, well, uh, the technology is uh, blowing up. I mean, the, the industry for aerial videography and the use of uh, the autopilot technology and the camera mount technology is enabling shots that have never been able to, to get before. Uh, using unmanned aerial aircraft uh, to achieve some of these is um, been a dream of DJI and uh, of the vendors that represent them. What about Homeland Security? Have they talked with you about any of this? Uh, Homeland Security? Um, on, a, on a personal level, yes, I have actually spoken with Homeland Security. Uh, we've actually done some demos and worked with them before. Uh, basically trying to educate them on the product and its uses. Um, trying to kind of alleviate the whole sort of privacy 
and drone stigma that's kind of been building up in the media around the use of these um, devices and really trying to shed some light on actually the positive uses that these things can can go out and perform such as like LiDAR work or hyperspectrum camera photography or um, all kinds of different aspects that haven't even been thought up of yet and really trying to get you know support from the public and everybody to you know open up people's minds and you know spawn innovation is really what DJI is, is all about. The Phantom's capable of about a 15 minute flight and it's all ready to fly out of the box for about $700. Yeah, all kinds of different uh, um, universities. I mean, there's all kinds of different small projects that are being done all over the place that, you know, um, forestry departments are looking at the tops of tree canopies and things like that. Um, you're able to get into places less invasively and extract data. Um, it's even interesting, animals don't even know how to react to these machines quite. So they act more natural around the machine than one man's present around there. And so you're able to get a much better idea of how things are happening around us with, uh, with some insight without actually having to tread into their territory in there. Well, the technology uh, was basically spawned uh, you know, 10 years ago. Uh, and it was uh, due to Frank and, and Swift uh, engineering the algorithms needed to basically be the brains of how to make a machine like that stay stable and fly and move through space with simple human interface. What's the range on some of these? Well, right now the, the ranges are very uh, pretty limited. Um, it's all mostly line of sight and limited to the radio controller's ability. In most instances, you can get farther than you can see with your own eyes. Um, but for most aspects in the way that I've been deploying and using the equipment, it's uh, everything's really close proximity. Um, the simpler, the better is basically how we try to keep it. 200 meters? Oh, you can get up to about a mile and a half range off a of radio. Um, they have data link equipment that you could actually hook up and make the aircraft fly uh, up to about six kilometers from your laptop computer, that kind of thing. Um, so there's a lot of capability out there, but the idea here is keeping it simple um, is one of the best ways to go and the safest ways to go because it's just, it allows more freedom, more flexibility, and just uh, more peace of mind when you're operating flying. What really impresses me are the things that we haven't thought about yet. Um, cameras have been somewhat of a simple idea for the aircraft. You know, putting a camera on the aircraft was one of the original ideas back when we were flying these equipment around uh, without any camera equipment on them. Um, but to me, the thing that excites me the most are going to be the people who take this technology and do things that we've never thought of before um, and go places we've never been before. Uh, inspecting power lines. There's power lines inspection. I mean, they can map out caves. There's devices where these copters can fly down through a cave, and the same part of the copter's device that's keeping it from running into the walls is actually mapping it out. So this thing uses a laser and can recreate a whole entire cave and fly itself safely through the whole entire thing and collect data that you just could never do with people uh, over a long period of time. Yeah, sinkholes, sewers. Uh, LiDAR has been a really uh, big tool that we're looking for in the industry to start using, uh, getting very acute, accurate mapping information as well. GIS work is going through the roof on this equipment as well. So we're here with uh, Sal Solario from KMEX. Uh, he's one of the eBoard members that's here at uh, the NAV convention. So what have you found that's interesting? Well, I've uh, found uh, the importance of uh, cloud computing. I mean, the broadcasters are going to have to deal with technology, and I think part of them dealing with technology will be to consider cloud computing in uh, their future plans in broadcasting. I think so. I think they may have a concern there, cause for concern with cloud computing. Well, you know, the, I think uh, as technology changes so rapidly, I think uh, there's a lot of fear uh, on the part of the broadcasters of what technology they're going to buy. And when they buy, they usually buy for you know a good amount of time. And uh, things going so fast, uh, it's very likely that the technology they purchase today may be obsolete tomorrow. That's a, yes, is that that's very true. But um, so, you know, they offer, uh, the companies that are offering um, cloud computing are, you know, looking at this as a huge, huge opportunity for them to offer a service and, you know, make their money just like everybody else. But uh, that's, that's basically what I've uh, encountered here at NAB this year. Okay, now we're with uh, Mr. Alan Kyle of Ikegami. And uh, Alan, we, we're just curious about uh, seeing what kind of new and exciting products we've got in 2013 that you're presenting here at NAB. Can you give us a kind of a general idea? Sure, thank you. Uh, 
As usual, Ikigami is showing a wide range of uh, new cameras and monitors at this year's show. And uh, I can walk you past a couple of the newest uh, products. I'll just follow you. Here on the main stage, we have five POV cameras. Uh, little cameras are probably hard to see, but we have, uh, well, they're very hard to see, but we have the small POV style cameras to my right and to my left. Uh, and also eight studio cameras uh, on the stage here. To my right are four CCD studio cameras, and to my left are four uh, CMOS uh, studio cameras. In particular, for field production, we're featuring the CMOS camera with the system expander, also the high-speed camera from 24 to 1,200 frames per second for the super slow-mo uh, style of application. Way down the end, out of view at this moment, we have some small cameras for the helicopter or for uh, applications where we need about an inch cube style of camera for special point of view uh, situations. Finally, I'd like to walk over here to a new product that we're showing. What have we here? This is a new introduction at uh, this year's show. This is actually a collaborative development between Airy and Ikigami. Uh, we're using the Airy 35, Super 35 millimeter uh, CMOS sensor as the front end with PL uh, mount and appropriate lens. This gives us a cine style uh, uh, visual impression of the video signal. But then the rest of the camera, including the real time video processing, the fiber transmission system, the video operator control panels, are the traditional Ikigami broadcast style. So. Uh, for situations where we'd like to have the cine look, but we want to have a camera that can work in a multi-camera situation, uh, this situation allows that type of uh, application. This is not 4K. This is conventional 2K output from the camera. We are sampling, the imager is sampling at higher than 2K, but the uh, transmission, the processing, the transmission and output are typically a 24p 444 color uh, output. All right, well, thank you for that. Well, for those of you who might be worried about losing your job because they're making equipment now that even a secretary could use, this is the place. This is GoPro, which makes cameras that you wear on your wrist for recreational purposes and many other applications. Uh, it is just phenomenal, and they're only a couple of hundred bucks. So now we're standing by the Ducati motorcycle with a motorcyclist and a helmet with the GoPro cameras mounted right on the helmet. If you can take a look at this, actually I looked like this a lot myself when I was younger. Uh, well, except uh, I wasn't into rubber suits. The SSP-10? SSP-10. Okay. So that comes complete with software, which you just install on, your, on a laptop. Okay. Okay, the unit's completely self-contained. It comes assembled as you see it. So there's no assembly to do at all. So that's a 10-inch um, display. Everything folds flat. Your now this has, we're shooting through the glass. Yes, you're shooting through the glass. You look through the back here. So you get direct vision straight down the lens. So when you're looking at the script, you're looking straight down the lens. Okay. Yeah, you can reconfigure it as well to make this straight reading. So you can move this monitor down flat okay. and mount your camera up here. Are you doing iPads and stuff with that? Yep, that's, that, that's the next one over here. This is the iPad prompter using the standard I, iPad 2. iPad 2? It's the same mounting as that unit, uh -huh. except we've swapped the monitor now for an iPad. Okay. Hi, my name is Mark uh, with uh, Flowlight, and we have a, a very interesting new product called the Cyclite. Uh, what the Cyclite does is it, it's a one light fixture a solution for lighting a green screen. And what we have is, we have the psych light on the, on the floor here. You can actually place that within a foot or so of the, of the wall, and it will perfectly light that green screen about 10 feet wide by about 10 feet tall. And as you go further up the screen, you can see that you have a perfectly lit screen from top to bottom. Now, one of the key things about the psych light that makes it different than lighting with any other kind of standard lights is that you can see how saturated and green that, light, that, uh, that key is. So when you put something that green behind there, the keys are very easily done. Um, you can also, in, in certain cases, you can take that, uh, that uh, psych light and put it against a white wall.
so you don't even need to have a green screen. It will actually be able to key off of a regular white wall. That, that's going to be somewhere between $1,000 and $1,200 when it comes out. And it will be co coming out probably in the next uh, three months or so in shipping. And then we, to, to show you, we have, we have a model of it here. And the, uh, the Cyclite uses what we call light wave technology. We have three high power 40 watt green LEDs that shine into this acrylic uh, light wave. So what happens when the light goes into the top, it's going to shine into this light wave, and the first surface it hits is that top one, which shines the brightest light because it's closest to the LED up straight. And then as it goes down, the light falls off naturally to go a less, 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 and then all the way down to the very bottom of it, down to the floor. So uh, we have three of these individual modules that will give you about a 10-foot wide by about a 10-foot tall, um, perfectly lit green screen. That This draws about 120 watts. So what, what we have here is we have uh, a man in a studio with, with just a, a very light gray or TV white background. The psych light's underneath the chair, and you see it's lighting up that whole green wall and giving you a perfect key. Now we're taking that directly out without, without any manipulation, and you can see you've got the perfect key on a white wall. I've, I've done a lot of corporate stuff, and I'll go in somewhere and they say, oh, I want to do a green screen, but the guy's only a foot and a half from the wall. Uh -huh. I put the psych light underneath the chair, and we have it will light that green screen perfectly. So um, you'll see here that how close it is to the wall. You get this perfect green screen from the bottom all the way up to the top. And in a minute, we'll, have, we'll show you the final result. And that's what we have. Okay, the green screen, there's the key. And there's the key. Wow. Mm -hmm. You can see more information. You can see the video by going to flowlight.com. That's F-L-O-L-I-G-H-T.com. Uh, we sell through all of the major resellers like B&H Photo, Amazon, MarkerTech, Adorama, all of those folks, as well as your local uh, video dealers. Hi, my name is Lisa Kastner. I'm here talking with Gard Cookson from Bella Keyboards. He also runs a business called Post Op Video in Burbank. We have our Pro Series keyboards. It's the only one with the built-in jog shuttle controller. So we have the uh, inner wheel is the jog, and the outer ring is the shuttle controller. And uh, obviously it's got all the shortcuts for whatever application you'd like. So we've got them for Premiere, for Avid, uh, for Sony Vegas. Um, Final Cut? Um, and for Final Cut Pro X, of course. It has a built-in light. Um, so in case you're in one of those dark editing rooms, uh, it has two USB 2.0 ports on the back. And right now we've got plugged in our little uh, adapter for our HD mouse, which is actually over here. So uh, this is our little wireless mouse. Um, we also have our um, Advantage series of keyboards. And the Advantage series is more economical. It doesn't have the built-in jog shuttle controller. Um, so it's the same keyboard without the... It's a similar keyboard. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. Um, still a good rugged design. Um, and, uh, you know, just more economical. The Killer Keys Pro application, uh, Killer Keys Express, and Killer Keys VR. And Killer Keys Pro is kind of the, the top dog of the applications. Killer Keys Pro resides on the desktop, and then it can communicate with the iPad app uh, using Wi-Fi. And the, the iPad application allows you, gives all sorts of um, functionality. So we've got a built-in um, keyboard, and actually maybe it's probably easier for me to show you <clears throat> some of the features here up close. So we have a built-in trackpad, so you can you really can completely remotely control your computer here. We've got built-in trackpad, multimedia controller, uh, quick, quick launch, applications over here so whatever is installed on your computer you can add to your quick quick launch section we have our application uh, active application switcher so if I switch over to Premiere Pro you'll notice that then we'll switch over and all the shortcuts for Premiere Pro will show up here now this is in a standard keyboard layout you'll notice but so I can, you can edit with this iPad and the killer keys absolutely I'm controlling this through the iPad as I'm uh, playing and pausing here. I've got frame-by-frame uh, frame control with my jog wheel. So I'm jogging back and forth. Um, so this is our little multimedia controller widget. And uh, 
So now this is in a, a standard keyboard layout. Looks very familiar. Now I can position this actually anywhere I want. So I can pull, pull this down to the bottom of the screen or I can actually just get rid of it. And now, right now we're running on an iPad 3, but it's also compatible on an iPad 2. Again, we're automatically switching based upon what, what application is running. So as I switch from uh, Premiere Pro to Photoshop, you're gonna notice that now here, these keys are gonna show up and these are for Photoshop. And we've got workspaces, so I can scroll between workspaces. And here, these keys are just your shortcut keys that I've dragged out onto my workspace. I can name the workspaces anything that, I've, that I'd like. I created one that's called Effects here, just for fun. Um, we get to uh, look at extra information on a key by just clicking on the little plus, if I can actually hit that. And we get to see the keystroke. We have a lot of configurability here. I can actually go in here, change the key look if I want. Let's say I can change the background. Um, let's say to a parchment look. So now you'll see I put a parchment here. I did uh -huh. kind of these more 3D looking buttons. So now I'm going to go back to my settings. And also we have widgets here. So I can take away and move widgets out of here. And let's say that I wanted to put the number pad here. So, so now I've got a number pad. Any way I want. Yeah. And what's even cooler is let's go into here and get get these guys back in here. So now I can actually go in and turn off widgets completely. So I hit done and now I've got an entire screen of just my shortcuts. So I can use this as kind of a control service. I can take these keys, move them in any order that I want. I can swipe to new workspaces if I'd like. Okay. Um, I can turn off the little plus buttons on here to make it a little cleaner. Notice that the pluses went away. I'll turn it back on so you can see the difference. All right, so then we'll go ahead and we'll turn our widgets back on again. We're very excited about this. It's got a lot of functionality. We've got over uh, 100 applications built in, over 30,000 shortcuts. Ken Williamson back here again, and we're talking with David Palmer of Mainstream uh, Streaming Network. So for some of you people like me who have just retired and whose passion might be a combination of radio and music, this might be a way to uh, turn a passion of yours into a hobby. I'm sure it's not for everyone, but I'm curious about it, so here he is. So David, if you could tell us a little bit about what you guys do. Well, sure. Well, what Mainstream Network does is we provide streaming services for radio stations and individuals who want to start their own internet-only radio station. We provide them with the technology so that they send us the signal and we give them a URL that they place on their website so when people click on it, it opens a player box so people can listen to them literally anywhere in the world. As long as they've got an IP connection, they can listen to their station. We also provide the technology so that on that player box, that that can be used for sales, generating revenue, and so on for the internet radio stations. And then we also provide iPhone apps so that people can listen to those same stations on their iPhones or mobile devices. Sounds very good. I like that idea of being able to, uh, if you're going somewhere in the car and you like that particular radio station, you can listen to it through your radio, car radio. Well, the, the great thing is if you look at the newest technology that is coming out, Mercedes-Benz, Cadillac, GMC, all of their stock radios now have a little button on it that says web. And what that is going to be used for is so web-ready radio is going to be installed in cars. You just put in the URL of the station you want to listen to, and it connects to it. So you literally can listen to the same station going from one end of the country to the other, and it's all IP-based. So if you have an internet radio station, it can be listened to in the car. It can be listened to on Apple TV. It can be listened to on a Roku. If, if you're in a car, how easy would it be to enter that URL address uh, so you can listen to it? What it does is it saves just like your favorites. You know, if you find Fox News on satellite and you hit save, it saves it as favorites. You actually go through and you enter the URL, hit save, and then it will save that station to it. So the next time you get in the car and you're driving down the road, you just hit preset number two and it takes you right to that web station. My question is this, in terms of uh, bandwidth and quality, I'm recording 96 kilohertz at 24 bits right now in the studio and what if I wanted to be able to deliver some high def radio at that rate? Well the great thing is there's, there's new technology called HEAAC 
And what HEAAC does is that uses less bandwidth, as low as a 32K, and gives it CD quality sound. So when you're on those mobile devices or you're in the car, you don't have to have a huge broadband connection. Now you can take that 196K and you can stream it out and you can stream it at that 32 HEAAC and you're gonna get CD quality. Thank you, uh, David Palmer. And uh, we've been interviewing David Palmer of uh, Mainstream Streaming Network for internet radio stations. If you're interested in that, uh, let us know and uh, we'll provide a link for you. And so, NAB 2013 draws to a close. I'd like to thank uh, members of our union to, for helping put this thing together, including our president, Steve Ross, our vice president, Joe Ayala, Lisa Kasler for doing the behind the scenes work. Also members of our e-board who came out here, Brian and Kevin and Ethan and Sal. Thank you very much, everybody. This is Ken Williamson saying good night from Las Vegas.